Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our uh, session OSS 101 Introduction to uh, Open Source for Students. Um, in this session, uh, it's a panel discussion. In this panel discussion, me and my fellow panelists, Mritunjai, Joe, and Anushka are going to discuss some beginner level questions on how to get started with contributions, what uh, are the uh, benefits associated with contributing? And uh, we will, at the end of the presentation, we will also share some resources that will help the students get started with the open source uh, con uh, contributions. My name is Savita, and uh, I am an active contributor to the Kubernetes ecosystem for about two years now. And recently, I led the 1.22 release team. Um, along this uh, journey, I have learned uh, quite a lot, uh, starting with my Git, improve my, improving my Git skills, um, making friends along the way, and uh, even getting through uh, the first uh, rough portion of the pandemic. Um, all was possible because of the open source community and uh, I'm here to share my experiences. Um, I would uh, like my fellow panelist Joe to introduce himself. Hi, I'm Joe Kuttner. I'm a software architect at salesforce.com. I'm also the co-founder of the Cloud Native Build Packs project, which is a CNCF incubating project. And that's how I uh, met some of the panelists here. Um, as part of my job at Salesforce, I work a lot with the open source community and I have for, for many years. Um, some of that is at a technical level, um, you know, contributing to projects, steering projects, but a lot of it is also working with the people and with the community. Um, and I think those are equally important parts as the technology and I'm looking forward to talking about why that is and how you can become a part of those communities today. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Mirtunjay. Thank you so much, Joe and Savita, and thank you so much to all the viewers who have joined us today. Uh, uh, introducing myself, I am Ritunjay uh, Sharma, and I am currently in my final year, and I'm pursuing uh, computer science engineering in India. Uh, at the same time, I think that it is because of open source only that I have got the software engineering internship at Hackathon. So currently, I'm an intern there. Uh, other than that, I have been contributing to uh, multiple communities uh, like Kubernetes. And in fact, uh, Joe, I met Joe uh, uh, through one such community, which he is a founding member of, uh, that is called Cloud Native Build Packs. So I was a uh, mentee with him and Google Summer of Code 2021. I have done, uh, I've been a CNCF intern for Kubernetes as well uh, in the spring. And I've made a lot of, lot of amazing friends from that community as well. And as everybody mentioned that, uh, open source is always, always, always more about the people. The people make the code, the people make the community. And uh, one of such friends uh, is also with us today, Anushka Mittal. And I would like her to introduce herself. She also has a tremendous uh, journey in her open source and she will definitely be a star in this community. Mm. Thank you, Mithunjay. Uh, thank you, Joe Savita. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I am Anushka Mittal. I am a student from India. I have been in open source communities for about three months now, really just a minute. And um, my journey started as an LFX summer mentee with my mentor, Jim. Uh, I worked on a project for called Falco Adapter. Uh, I've learned a lot from the open source community as a a software developer as a programmer as a person really and here i am uh, with my fellow panelists helping trying to help our audience get started with their journey so let's get started right the first topic our panel would like to address discuss is why why should one do open source contributions why what would be the right motivation you know to start so uh, joe would you like to add to this Sure. Um, I think there's uh, a lot of a lot of reasons for for students both um, uh, to grow their skills, but to also build their network. Um, you know, it, it's also fulfilling, right? So being an open source contributor is uh, something you can put on your resume, but it's also uh, something that gives you a, a great deal of satisfaction. Uh, but even if you have experience already, it's it's something that 
um, can sort of expand the, uh, the scope of what you know and, and how you do things. If you've already been working uh, with uh, other developers or, or even in a job, uh, you learn one way of doing something, but when you're exposed to the open source community, you learn new processes, uh, new ways of doing things. Um, and so like, I like to say that software developers are, are perpetual students and we're always learning. Um, so yeah, uh, Mitunjay, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, as Joe mentioned, like we are all students, right? And I think one of the biggest thing that I have learned as an open source contributor is that we all have a learn it all mindset. And uh, basically because of this, uh, there are various like people usually find motivation. I uh, how to why to contribute to open source, how to contribute to open source. Uh, one of the biggest motivation I think that you one can have is like the kind of impact they are making. Even if a one documentation fix uh, in a project like Kubernetes or Linux or any other open source project, a one small documentation fix or a broken link fix can impact millions of people. The kind of impact, the most important thing that I feel is one of the most important thing that affects is impact. The second thing is that the kind of mentorship open source programs offer, even when you are a student, that is something that is, uh, you know, something unique. Why unique? Because in colleges, uh, like uh, there is theoretical knowledge in abundance, but when you need practical knowledge that are being used in the real world, we require something so we are require some motivation as well as some programs that can help us get mentored. So there are various programs like Google Summer of Code, LFX Mentorship, Outreach Internship, and we all have mentioned about that, the, that in our resources as well, which we'll be shared later. But I think these programs are very, very amazing because you are not only getting, you know, you're not only learning, you are also earning. So you are also moving towards financial independence from even when you are a student. So I think this is uh, one of the major, major, you know, uh, it can be, you know, uh, uh, what can what do we say? Uh, an importance how you if, if you if you come and join open source communities. So I, I mean, I would like to uh, move it to Savita if she has to say or uh, something like to add to these points on this. Definitely. So Mritunja and Joe, those were really really great points. Uh, as my fellow panelists covered here, they talked about the uh, community, they talked about um, the opportunities, the mentorships. In addition to that, um, there are a few things that you will learn uh, being a part of the open source ecosystem. Like, uh, for example, a project spans the entire world, which means you will learn how to collaborate, how to communicate, how to asynchrony, asynchronously work with your peers. These are really great skills. And um, please bear in mind that uh, contributing to open source projects, being a part of it is a no judgment zone, which means that you can start something small, you can learn along the way, and it is okay to make uh, mistakes. Don't be afraid of them. I have made a lot of mistakes. For example, um, I was a uh, docs lead for 1.19 release team, and I messed up an entire set of deadlines. I swapped them, and I didn't catch it uh, until the end and uh, we as a team got through it it taught me how to take responsibility for something that i clearly missed and uh, it helped me work with my team to uh, get the uh, issue communicated to the wider audiences so i have learned uh, quite a bit of things uh, just by making uh, mistakes so don't be afraid of them um, and uh, personally for me the real motivation is the community um, i get strength from them and i learn uh, a lot i learn something new every day uh, which keeps me um, going so um, that that's that's uh, something that um, i want to add and i don't have anything more to add um, i'm just going to ask my um, uh, uh, friends here, if they have anything else to any anything else to add to it. I think we've uh, covered most of our points, and 
I think uh, the impact is what uh, motivates all of us, the impact we have as individuals in such a big community. So, Joe, would you like to bring up the next issue? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so we talked a little bit about why uh, it's important to contribute to open source and what you get out of it. But uh, there's also the how, you know, how do you get started? How do you break into a project? How do you uh, engage with, with new people? And uh, there's a lot of issues, uh, you know, that make that hard, including imposter syndrome and just feelings of inadequacy. Um, but, you know, when we asked on social media, we asked for questions for the panel for, for this discussion. And one of the questions that we got, and actually more than once was, you know, what if uh, the maintainers think I'm stupid? Or what if I ask a dumb question? And so, you know, I'd like to ask the panel, how can uh, junior or junior developers or less experienced developers feel comfortable contributing to open source uh, without feeling like an imposter? Uh, and uh, let's start with Anushka. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I am, I think I'm the uh, most new person to the open source uh, community out of all, all of us in the, in the panel. So I absolutely understand it's just very recently that I have, you know, come out of my comfort zone and <clears throat> address this overwhelming, well, by the looks of it, overwhelming community uh, code and, you know, open source softwares. Um, I think something that's really stuck with me, uh, something that Joe, a panelist here, has said once is we were all babies once. And that makes sense because, you know, it's natural to make mistakes when you start off with something new. Uh, let it be anything. And well, open source contributions and just contributions to softwares in general is, uh, well, a big thing. And you will have to start and you will make some mistakes. It's natural. Uh, I think the right way to deal with this is to accept it as a part of your learning, cu learning curve and get your hands dirty, make mistakes. You have the community to ask questions to, to get help from. There's a lot of source, there's a lot of material available, you know, to help you, guide you. So yes, just accept the mistakes, be happy, start contributing. Uh, Savita, would you like to add? Uh, of course. So this topic is something really, really close to my heart uh, because I have been there. I have felt like an imposter um, there. Uh, I have tried a few things um, to come out of the feeling of uh, like what would folks think um, what uh, what if this question is like um, not even a big deal um, it's it's all okay uh, it's fine to ask uh, you can ask the maintainers you can ask uh, in a project discussion forum whatever question that you have don't think if it's going to be a silly question if it's going to be a stupid question if it's like something really simple it's all okay uh, please keep in mind that the questions that you are asking someone might also have the same questions and they don't want to uh, ask or they are intimidated uh, this is the first step that you can take is to um, ask um, ask for help and there is nothing uh, wrong in that um, it takes a bit of courage and to even ask like what is going on and if you see like big projects like Kubernetes, there is a lot of things going on. If you think like um, you want to know and learn everything in one day or a couple of days, it's not possible at all. Start to uh, make changes to documentation, start reading documentation, like you can familiarize yourself um, or start attending the meetings, right? So every Kubernetes has verticals, uh, special interest group. You can start um, attending the meetings. And it is, it is this, this pattern is uh, applicable to any other open source. Every open source project has community meeting calls. Um, they have their own uh, uh, discussion forum in the form of Slack. Um, they use a combination of GitHub issues. So you can pick, you can go and see what is happening. Um, check if it aligns with your um, uh, interest first thing. Or if you just want to know what's just going on in the world outside of your coursework, um, join the call, say hi. Uh, it might feel a lot 
to say that but once you just introduce yourself and express your interest there will be someone or the other who would uh, uh, would be there to welcome you and uh, help you through the first few days of your uh, journey till you feel comfortable and don't forget to pass it on right so one, once you have that thing going on once you have started contributing once you feel comfortable um, uh, return the favor like please be welcoming to the new contributors. You can um, guide them. And uh, also um, uh, one other thing that I wanna mention is that sometimes uh, keep in mind that when you ask few questions in a public forum, maintainers uh, might take a little bit of uh, time to respond because uh, some of them have a day job, some of them things going on and everyone is all around the world which means they have some festival they have some vacation so uh it's okay uh, uh to wait and uh, please don't lose patience or don't feel like they are not getting back to you they are just um dealing with something at that particular moment and someone will definitely get back so i just ask the newcomers to have a little bit of uh um the set the expectation like okay wait for a couple of days or wait for like a week uh, just to make sure that uh um, you get uh, the reply that you want before jumping in and um are uh, uh, having the fear that oh no one's responding which means that it's not my place to be i have felt all those things and that's the reason i'm sharing um there might be so many things that's going on um that is not in the control or outside the control of everyone so um just be empathetic and please be nice to uh, your fellow contributors um I am going to, that's all I have to say. So I'm going to pass it on to Mithunjai. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I totally agree with Savita's last point, especially like everybody is, you know, doing it quite, you know, empathetically. So both the contributors as well as the maintainers, everybody have to be empathetic towards each other. And the another point that I wanted to add, like one of the most important points when we discuss about imposter syndrome is, like people, you know, are very afraid of asking questions. So one of the, I know, I mean, this might be just my opinion, but I feel that asking questions in a community channel in itself is an open source contribution. Why? Because when you are asking a particular question, you are indicating that there's something, there is a link that is not being connected with a new beginner and with the community documentation or maybe the structure process or something. There is something that there is that black gap between someone who is just trying to begin and someone who already knows it. Because usually people who build the documentation, they might think that this is quite normal. The person must be knowing it. While building those documentation, it is it is very much possible that they might have missed on some steps, which a beginner might not get. And that is where if you ask a question in the public, especially in a public channel, why I'm saying in a public channel, because then not only you will be getting responded early because whoever knows about the issue, they will reply. There is a learning happening for everyone in that community because everybody will look into that question. Everybody will try to answer that question or maybe someone, another who is offensive, who is a fence hitter, who is still not asking the question. They can have their question get answered. So totally agree with that. And um, I think another doubt that people have which I would like to come to other panelists right after this is that can I contribute to open source even if I don't know, you know, technical, they, they, have, they don't have the particular code language knowledge or they don't have a particular technical skill. How, how, how can they indulge in non-coding contribution? Because even they are very important. For them. So, I mean, Joe, if you would like to begin with it. Yeah. Yeah, there's absolutely so many opportunity to, opportunities to contribute, even when you don't know the, the technology or the language. Mm -hmm. Open source projects, like any other project, require a diverse set of skills, uh, technical, you know, for coding, but uh, also uh, marketing and uh, project management and things like that. So uh, lots of opportunities to contribute documentation fixes, documentation itself, uh, you know, writing blogs to promote the project. Uh, helping organize meetings and record meetings and take notes. Um, yeah, uh, creating content that uh, the marketing team can use on social media. I, I can't stress how many different possibilities there are. 
that said, if you want to learn the language, um, there's always going to be, uh, you know, resources to help you do that too. But um, yeah, lots of, lots of different opportunities for all sorts of different skill sets. Um, Anushka, anything you want to add to that? Yes, Joe. Uh, that was a really uh, informative answer, Joe. Thank you very much. So my first contribution was to the Korean release of Kubernetes, where I changed this one link in uh, the documentation, in the readme. And um, even though back then it didn't seem like a big contribution because I just changed this one little line of the go of the readme even. Uh, a couple of days later, when I saw my name in the release, and when I realized that, you know, there's been a project like Kubernetes of that, uh, well, that big a project going out with my name in the release, because I have fixed something. I am going to be somehow impacting how people are using that application, that software, right? That was beautiful, really that made me realize how important non-coding contributions are because anybody trying to familiarize themselves with that uh, project will go through the readme, you know, go through those steps, try to go to the link that I changed, that I corrected. So it open, you know, non-coding contributions are a big part of open source contributions. And, you know, to address what open source contributions are, they are just contributions that's helping the software become better, right? Become easier to use, more accurate, just better. So all the contributions that you make, making a blog to you know, help someone get started with the project or correction in a readme, all of them are welcome. And just think about the impact it's making. Thousands of people using the software, getting helped by whatever you've corrected or whatever you have contributed to do the project. That's a big motivation for me to make non-coding contributions and should be for you know, everyone out there. Savita ji, would you like to add something? Oh, definitely. So like Joe and uh, Anushka mentioned, I cannot stress enough like how important the documentation is. I personally believe, and one of my good friends mentioned uh, once to me that a success of the project depends on the quality of the documentation. So uh, it's really, really important uh, to have a good documentation. And that's a great place to get started. Uh, with familiarizing the project and also like it's a non-code contribution and you don't have to be afraid that if you don't know the language and you can always do a translation you can do localization that way you can help uh, a set of people who don't know or who are not native english speakers and they would want to understand the technology and they would want to start on with their own native language and then move up the ladder by learning english later or contributing back and forth. So there's always opportunities to start a localization if it doesn't exist. And if it exists, you can always contribute more towards it. Um, in addition to that, uh, Joe mentioned about marketing. Um, any project, um, any open source project is always in need of uh, people who can help with marketing. Marketing as in like even publishing the uh, project stats, um, the number of new contributors or the each issues like um, in um, figuring them out and then uh, uh, making sure that it reaches public in a uh, consumable way, right? That is a talent uh, to present all the details and stats. Um, you can help there uh, if you are a data analytics person who want to do some kind of uh, um, data mining with uh, the uh, uh, in uh, which month uh, there are a lot of new contributors coming in. Like you can always, there is a raw data set already available. You can take it and you can process it and you can create this mini little dashboard or something and you can always share with um, everyone uh, within the project, outside the project. That would be helpful. Um, you can, uh, if you have great social media skills, which I don't possess at all, uh, for whatever reason that I cannot be a social media person, you can uh, help uh, uh, making posts in Twitter or other uh, official channels of the particular project that you're contributing to. You can do that. Um, what else? And there is program management. So if you're interested in program management, project management, you want to learn what it is, you can contribute there. 
are. You can do triaging of issues. That is a great way to learn the project as well. And that gives a little bit of insight into uh, even the coding uh, part of the project. And it's not a, not a lot of things at once, but it is like taking baby steps, right? So you can learn a little and then you can just um, move on and then you can just uh, expand your knowledge. So th those are the points that I wanted to add. Um, I don't have anything else, but I want to just open it up and ask if uh, anyone wants to add more to the um, topic before we move on to the next one. I think we've uh, covered most of this question. I think the only other point that I would like to add here is that uh, I'm always available to help you with your Instagram posts, Twitter posts, and I would love to. So <laughs> yes, um, let's, we can get to the next issue. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Anushka. I'm going to take you up on that. I'm so bad. Like every, everything that I type, sometimes it goes into a wider reach and I realize that there is a spelling mistake or there is a important thing missing from the post. And after I make it and it gets shared multiple times and then I realize, okay, there is a mistake in there. And um, so it's, it's, it's the story of my life. So <laughs> moving on to the um, next one. Um, we have discussed a little bit about how to get started, how to overcome the imposter syndrome, and how what kind of contributions that you can do, how to learn the language, what language is right for me, and uh, so many things. Um, the next question is more on the focus of um, which project, how can I choose a project, and um, wh what is the right way? Like, um, uh, I know what I want to do, but I don't know a way to start or how to choose a project. So would uh, the would you all be kind enough to add a couple more points uh, to it and make sure the uh, students have uh, places to start with? Um, Jai? Yeah. So, I mean, Savita, that's uh, a beautiful question because start is almost always the most difficult thing. You know, the most difficult thing is the beginning itself. Once you have pushed yourself towards the start then nothing stopping you usually if you are consistent so i have uh, like from my personal experiences as far as i can share or to the students or to the folks whom i know people uh, should try to first of all self-evaluate like what kind of projects are they interested into and you know i mean there are roadmaps these days available but i personally feel that uh, uh, we should have a more of an exploratory journey rather than a particular theoretical one. So people should explore, first of all, like what is their interest in, where their where interest their lies. And interest should not be based on the popularity of projects. That's my personal opinion. As well as I feel that's important because, you know, Kubernetes is a huge, huge, huge open source project and a lot of contributors. But at the same time, there are many other CNCF projects which are doing amazing, but they have less contributors just because they aren't that famous that doesn't mean that they aren't doing good or they are not making the community or the software world very, very valuable. You will get the opportunity to learn a lot there. So don't be, uh, don't put yourself in a particular comfort zone, first of all, and uh, try to explore, try to self-evaluate first before moving on to first your, your first open source project. That's what I wanted to say. And next, I would like to say, like, my mentor, Joe, can add more to it because he has been, he's been, he has been mentoring me I think he he will be able to answer it from the other side. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the best project to contribute to is the one you can contribute to, uh, whether that means you understand it or you're able to engage with the community. So uh, the only way you'll figure that out is is kind of by diving in, right? Asking questions, which we you know we've talked about why that's okay to do, um, but also just you know trying to use the project. Um, so. Very often, I think people come to an open source project because they're already using it uh, some way, um, and and that's a good reason. Um, but even if you're not, just you know, enter with a beginner's mind. Um, you might uncover things that uh, are common problems, but the maintainers don't recognize immediately because they're kind of heads down in the in the tech technical parts of it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, getting your getting your hands on the code or, or the documentation or whatever part you're looking to contribute to is um, will help reveal whether that 
a particular project is is right for you. I mean, that's my take as a maintainer, though. I think uh, I'm curious to hear what Anushka thinks as a as a contributor. I guess I was on mute. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, those are really good points, Joe. Thank you so much. I think the only thing I would like to add is uh, since I was a big nerd and I saw this happening with me, uh, go look for you know good first issues or issues that have mentioned uh, you know help wanted or such issues. These issues are usually simpler and uh, you know you'd find yourself understanding more of the code and being able to contribute more easily. So yes, that's one thing. Uh, the other being that we will be sharing some resources at the end of the session. And uh, please feel free to go check them out and find the projects you like and contribute to it. All projects usually also have uh, guidelines to how they would you know, like you to contribute, maybe something specific, like they want a signed off commit, uh, commit sorry. And uh, right, so do read the guidelines. Uh, having some basic knowledge of Git, GitHub will help you. And um, I, think, uh, I think we have covered all the points here. Uh, if not, please, I would uh, request the panel members to add something that they would like to. Uh, we could have those other concluding remarks, as I believe we have about uh, five to 10 minutes of our session left. So starting with Savita ji. Um, that, those are really, really great points, uh, Mritunjai, Joe, and Anushka. Um, and by being a part of this panel, I am learning a lot already. Uh, so to add uh, more to it, please don't be a stranger. Um, say hi to us and we would link our um, handles and Slack IDs uh, later in the presentation. Um, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions and uh, it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to feel uh, like everything that you feel before getting started with something really big or like something out of your comfort zone. Um, just remember, take one step at a time um, and uh, help us just to ask away. Uh, like all you need to do is just ask and uh, someone will always be there to help in one way or the other. Um, and uh, we, we we had a great discussion i feel like but if you have follow up questions please feel free to ask us in the q a or um in the twitter or in the slack anywhere that you feel comfortable with uh moving on to um uh, yeah I, I would just like to say, say first of all thanks to all uh, the fellow panel members because all of your point were you know, I guess a learning experience for me as well as for everyone in the audience, I guess. And this has been a fantastic discussion and we will definitely like you all to connect with us even later on after this talk. We are all here to help you. Don't forget to ask your questions. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's, uh, it's my honor and pleasure to help you students grow in uh, your careers and in your skills. So. Uh, Thanks for being here and engaging and uh, look forward to your questions. Uh, grateful for this panel, really. Uh, it gave me an opportunity to he be here and, you know, share my experiences. Open source community has been nothing but great to me. And uh, I wish to be the same to whoever would need help and whoever is a newcomer to the community. So please do reach out and uh, we're all here to help. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I hope our panel did give you something that you were looking for, the push, some resources, anything. And we will have a couple of slides following this with a few resources. And uh, if we have some more time, I think we can come on live for uh, question and answers, or we can answer them in the chat here. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining.